So then still on cholesterol, which of these factors increases the production of low density lipoprotein? A high dietary saturated fat intake, low carbohydrate intake, low serum B12, or a low serum vitamin C. So just pause for a moment and think about what you think to be the correct answer. Now, most people, traditionally trained doctors, would pick A. And you would be surprised to know that there's no proven mechanism by which saturated fat can actually increase LDL. So this study looked at the impact of three fats, olive oil, which contains 19% saturated fat, butter, containing 66% saturated fat, and coconut oil, which contained 94% saturated fat, and they looked at the impact of those fats on cholesterol levels. Now, the traditional dogma would have you believe that the coconut oil group must have seen significant rises in LDL levels. In actual fact, the LDL level in the coconut supplementation group actually fell, and it actually reduced by more than the olive oil group the fact is there's no proven mechanisms by which saturated fat can increase LDL levels. It's never been shown, and yet somehow this has ended up as an indisputable accepted fact in medicine, and it really needs to be overturned. On the other hand, vitamin B12 deficiency has been proven to increase cholesterol synthesis, and not only that, we even understand the underlying molecular mechanisms. All right, now this is an interesting one. So this again goes against a uh, long-held dietary wisdom and dietary dogmas. Large-scale randomized control trials evaluating the replacement of dietary saturated fat with seed oil derived polyunsaturated fats. What's a mouthful? Basically, they took out saturated fat and they gave people seed oils. They found A, increases in all-cause mortality. B, reductions in all-cause mortality. No significant change in all-cause mortality or D, these studies have never been performed. Now, some of you might pick D, and that's not unreasonable, but that's incorrect. These studies actually have been performed. The unfortunate thing is that many of us doctors have simply not heard about these studies or we haven't looked at the results of these studies. The answer is actually A, removing saturated fat from the diet and replacing it with seed oils actually increases all-cause mortality. So the first large-scale RCT to examine this question was from 1965. Heart attack survivors were randomly allocated to receive either a supplement of corn oil or the regular diet. And after two years, 48% of those in the corn oil group had had heart attacks compared to only 25% on regular high-saturated fat diets. The next study is much closer to home for us, Sydney Diet Heart Study. This was a randomized controlled trial examining the effects of replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat in men who had heart attacks. And it found that those Australian males who increased their intake of these seed oil derived fats were 62% more likely to die. And finishing in the same year, we've also got the Minnesota coronary experiment. And this was a double blinded randomized controlled trial on more than 9,000 men and women. And again, subjects who replaced saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats faced an increased risk of death. And indeed, this was shown again in the Women's Health Initiative study. Now, published in 2006, this was a massive study of over 48,000 females, and it had a mean follow-up of 8.1 years. And not incidentally, it was horribly expensive, costing about 700 million US dollars, which means we don't get a do-over. And this modern day randomized control trial found a 26% increased risk of cardiac complications in those females randomized to a reduced saturated fat diet. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if all of this was news to you. Now, the reason is that the original investigators weren't completely transparent about these findings. So the Sydney Diet Heart Study, for example, it was completed in 1973, but the mortality data wasn't published until some 40 years later after the data was actually discovered in a basement. The Minnesota Coronary Survey also finished in 1973, and it took 16 years for a redacted version of the findings to be published. 
And again, it wasn't until 2016 that a more complete version was finally published, again after a chance finding of the study data showed up in a basement. And you can't make this up. And as for the Women's Health Initiative study, the only statistically significant finding of the whole study just happened to be left out of the results table and it was never mentioned in any press conference. This vague sentence on page 661 of the publication was the only the single reference to it, the finding being that females with a history of heart disease faced a 26% increased chance of complications like heart attacks when they reduced their saturated fat. And follow-up to the Women's Health Initiative study demonstrates that this risk only increased with time, this paper reporting a 61% increased risk of cardiac complications in the reduced saturated fat group. Now, nobody really knows why these four randomised control trial studies, the findings haven't been effectively disseminated. So Ivan D. France was a co-principal investigator on the Minnesota coronary experiment and he indicated that it may have been due to the difficulty he had in reconciling the study's findings with his belief that saturated fat to be bad. So when he was asked directly about the delay in publishing the findings, he stated, we were just disappointed in the way it came out. So I guess if you take one thing away from this tutorial, please make sure you look at the data yourself, that you don't just accept common belief because all too often we find that the common belief is incorrect.